so many different models on the runway with these varied brunette looks. There's always a different reflection of color throughout the brown. The new illuminated brunettes really help us to create those looks with ease. What I really love about the illuminated shades from Goldwell are the integrated technologies of Top Sheet and Illumin. So you have the durability and coverage of Top Sheet, but you also have the amazing light reflection that we create with Illumin shades. The great thing about it is that you're able to do it all in one step. It's incredible. Good evening, everyone. So here in the New York Academy, we are sharing with you tonight the iconic brunette collection. And next to me is the fabulous Lindy Blackwell, who is here to share this collection that you helped create. So share with us a little bit about what the creative process was with this collection. It's so beautiful. So share what the inspiration was. So I think um, when we were creating the iconic brunettes collection, what we were really trying to showcase were four very distinctive personalities, all within a brunette color pattern. Palette. So as we go through each one of them, we'll go through that a little bit more, but um, I think with, with most people in general, just because a certain individual has brown hair doesn't mean that they necessarily all have the same tastes. So each one has a very specific feeling to it, so there's a real emotion behind the images in each one of them. And the other thing that we really wanted to focus on was the creation of volume th within those actual looks, because we know when we think about brown as a color palette, sometimes it, it can may appear very dense or muted, and it lacks volume or the appearance of volume. So it was about the creation of volume throughout, throughout that brunette canvas also. So it's about the personality, I think, yep. as the start, right? Because I love, first of all, I love the names of these and you'll get to hear the names of each technique, which I think really suits the model and would then suit the client in salon. But also it's about creating where you want to almost use color as a textural guide. So if, let's say, the client had finer hair, how you could build volume through color, and then also how you can almost take away from volume if you needed to on hair that was a little bit over voluminous, but all in a color story. And so this is all building in with browns, different nuances of browns. And brown does not have to be boring. This no. is all about creating really different nuances within a very large spectrum of browns. And what's exciting about this collection is also that we have six new illuminated shades that are a part of it. So tell us a little bit about, I know you have some faves within the illuminated shades. We'll take a look at exactly what they are, but share what you have felt with working with these. I think for me personally as you know a creative person I really love the ability to have different choices and what I loved about the new illuminated brown shades was the fact that they had categorized them into three different segments so we have two shades that will cover gray which is wonderful one being in a cool direction and the other being in a warm direction and then we have two fashion shades that are in a cool family and we have two fashion shades that are in the warm family. So within those six shades, we have a huge amount of variety. And for me, the hero shade is 7S Be It BL. There are so many amazing creative things that you can do with it. And you know, 
infinite possibilities. So for me, that's something that we don't have in the portfolio currently that really allows us to create things that we couldn't before. Amazing. And so let's take a look at these shades. So we're talking about a six natural at ash violet. So again, one of the natural shades, amazing for what will give you up to 100% gray coverage, as well as a six natural at red brown. And then working then into what you're talking about in a little bit more of a fashion story, a four brown at red red, a five brown gold at KK, and then six brown pearl at violet ash, which I think is really special because you've got this beautiful brown pearl, but now really building in a violet ash cool. And then your fave, seven silver beige at BL or blue, really. Yeah. So an amazing spectrum of color. And what's also great about our illuminated shades in Top Chic is the fact that the technology is really important a, an important quality to it. So when you were speaking about browns, a lot of times it's about building in saturation of color, but what's special about the illuminated technology is that you have these oxidative dyes that go into the hair and then these alumin-like dyes that sit on the surface of the hair. So you're not getting, you're getting a beautiful saturated color with this incredible amount of high glaze luminescent shine like we see in a lumen. So the benefit of both worlds, and I also think the one thing you were sharing with me is that the durability on this is really exceptional. Yeah, and I think that's the thing um, with the illuminated shades, especially with the brown shades. You know, as I had mentioned earlier, sometimes brown as a color tends to look really dense and it lacks light reflection just because of the density of the actual pigment. Mm -hmm. Because we have the durability of the top chic within the shade, we are able to create you know, the density, but on the same token with the Illumin built in with technology, you have the luminescence and the light reflection, which actually creates far more light and brilliance throughout the shade. So for me, it's the best of both worlds. We're getting the durability, we're getting the density, but we're also getting the light reflection and the shine. Yep, so high shine, high saturation, all of it in one. High five. High five, Yeah. right? I could high five you on that right now. Yeah, awesome high collection. Five. So <laughs> let's take a look within the Iconic Brunettes. Of course, we have four to share with you tonight, but let's take a look at the very first one that we would like to share with you, and that is the Natural brun Brunette. So the natural look in the Iconic Brunette collection. Lindy, I see that you've pre-sectioned. Talk about what you're gonna start with so far. Okay, so one of the unique things about the Iconic Brunettes collection in general is the fact that each one of the looks has a stretched regrowth. So what I'm going to do is, I've started with my traditional tea parting. So you can see that we have her sectioned out. I'm gonna go ahead and start applying my background foundation, which is a five level matte brown, into the regrowth. And as I do that, I will start, I'll start on the parting. As you can see here, I'm gonna gently tap in the background foundation first before I release the hair, just to keep everything clean and tidy. Always starting at the back, just for cleanliness and where the hair is densest. So tracing out the section first, yeah? Yep, exactly. So I will then go into the sections as we would normally, but as you can see, as I go in, I'm going to just drag my background foundation down more than we traditionally would, so it would be different on each canvas. But with the natural brunette, because we're trying to create a lived-in look, just pulling that regrowth down and blending it out slightly. and moving down the section the same way. Great, so when you're working on this, it's working from that top round to the nape through the back and working each section, is it alternated as far as how much of the stretch regrowth between sections or is it consistently the same section by section? So in the regrowth area, the length uh, can be slightly varied but mostly the same. We will change that slightly as we start to go into the technique um, and we will vary the length of the regrowth in that area, but in the regrowth, no, we're keeping it fairly symmetrical. Great, so working this through the back left quadrant on our model, and then you're gonna work to the right and then continue through on all four quadrants. Exactly. Great, so we'll let you work and we'll get to see this in just a moment. Perfect. 
So your application of the stretched regrowth is complete. And so now I see that you've sectioned out for the technique application. So share what you've done as far as sectioning. OK, so the sectioning is quite simple uh, on the natural brunette technique. We have four triangles. As you can see, we have the one in the front here. Uh, which is centered to her nose. And then if we tip down even further, we have two that are symmetrical to one another, but horizontal. Um, and as we turn her around, you can see that the fourth triangle is at the back of her head. We then have a parting from ear to ear below the occipital at the back. And everything else that you see on the side is just what was left over from the triangular shapes. Great. So in typical application, top yep. and working with this back section from the occipital down. Yeah. So in the back section, this entire technique is a freehand freeform technique. I'm going to take vertical sections and we will be alternating between two formulas in the back. What we're trying to do with this is use the two of our darkest shades to create um, density and some fullness through the back to create a shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the first formula and I'm going to paint it on the palm of my hand. And so evenly saturating through, so same from that really developed regrowth area that's pulled out, you're now building in that first formulation, scalp to ends, good saturation. And then laying a paper in just for cleanliness, right? Because this whole technique is all about freehand and using your hands. Exactly. So as you can see, as Rebecca had said, I'm just placing a foil underneath just for cleanliness. So that was my first formula. The second one I'm going to go in again take another vertical section. I'm going to use my second formulation. I'm then going to just flip and paint on the back of my hand. That way I'm not having to constantly wipe. I can keep the sections clean. So again, moving from the regrowth color all the way to the ends. And I'm just gently going to place that down it's touch one another. Um, as you can see, we're melting the color together. Just a variance of the cool and warm tones. So I'm moving back to my first formulation. As you can see, the sections that I'm taking are quite generous. Now, depending on the density of the hair that you're working with, you can obviously adjust that to be um, smaller sections if you have less hair. My model that I'm working on today has quite dense hair, so I'm wanting to use larger sections just so that uh, I'm, having a, I'm gonna have a very soft melt of the color together. Great, so alternating the two, you're taking about two inch section to right and then placing a paper down just to keep it clean. And you would say that because this model has more dense sections, probably you'll end up with a total of about five sections across the back, but this would then alternate depending on density, texture of hair. It could be maybe five up to even eight sections, would you say, as far as painting? Absolutely. Uh, you know, as we would with any situation, we're just gonna read the density of the hair and section accordingly. As Great. you said, I'm just gonna continue to work here and I'm gonna finish the back section. Great, Lindy. So you'll finish that alternation until you get to that other side of the nape behind the ear, and then we'll move on to the triangular sections up above. Great. So last section, our back section is completed. We can see the five sections just laid on a paper for neatness, and now we're going to start to move into the side panel. So as we mentioned before, it is a freeform technique, but I'm just going to go ahead and gently cover over the first section just with a few clean papers so that I'm able to work over to the side just again for cleanliness. So what I'm going to do is continue to section vertically. I'm gonna release the side section and I'm gonna move from the back vertically towards the front of the head. What I'm going to be doing is using the same two formulas from the occipital down that I'd used previous, but I'm also going to incorporate one of the new illuminated shades, the 5B at BK. So as you can see here, I've sectioned again vertically. I'm going to take my first section 
the paint on my palm again and just moving slightly into that extended regrowth that I had painted previously, working down the hair, and then I'm just going to release onto the paper. I'm gonna go in with my second section, again, vertical. And I'm going to paint on the back of my hand with my second formula. Again, working slightly up into the regrowth again. So alternate again, still staying in verticals, and Walter, al now alternating with your other accent shading. Exactly, so I'm gonna go in for my third vertical section, and this is where I'm incorporating my third formula. My sections with the illuminated brown shade that I'm using are going to be slightly narrower than the ones previously done, just because I'm not wanting to add too much warmth into her base, just to keep it looking natural. Now again, it's okay if the colors are touching one another because they're all harmonious and they're all within a level of darkness of one another. So again, very much free form, not worrying too much about the color touching and incorporating into itself. So I'm just gonna continue to travel towards the front of the head with the same pattern that I've just done with these three shades and continue all the way to the front, right? So just continuing from behind the high point in recession at the front of your section. Exactly. Let me ask you, would you repeat the same thing on the opposite side? So it is symmetrical, right? Absolutely. The colors to keep in mind is not to worry too much about making the sections exactly the same size. If they do vary slightly, that's completely okay. And that's what makes it the natural technique, right? Exactly. It's really putting that influence of how it's going to fall and really having a little bit more intuition, intuitive placement as you work. Precisely. Great. So you're going to work through that section, alternate uh, to the opposite side, and then we'll take a look at the triangles through the top. Beautiful, Lindy. I love the way that this is then working through this entire section from the rounds down and doing that alternation with your third accent shade. So tell us what's going on next. So as we move into the triangle sections, you're going to see that we're going to change the direction that we paint the hair. So what I'm going to do is release the one at the very back, always working from the back of the head towards the front. I'm then going to start sectioning horizontally through the triangles. So I will show you that first. The difference here is we're gonna go back to what we had originally done from the occipital and So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this out of my I'll take my first formula. Again, I'm going to paint it in the palm of my hand. So same thing, you're doing really the same size sections, give or take to give it a little bit of interest, that intuitive interest, but same size sections as you worked through, but now switching the direction from vertical to horizontal. Yes. So as you can see, I've released my second section. I'm gonna go in with my second formula. Just work slightly up into that extended regrowth color that I had originally done working down the hair. And just alternating, again, great saturation of color, working on, on that horizontal, and building from that point of the triangle up to the flat, alternating through the whole section with your two shades. Exactly. Once I've finished this section, I'm just going to release the last one just to show you what's happening with the other three triangles that we're going to see at the top. As we move to the side of the head, we always want to section horizontally to the way that we're standing in front of the hair. So as you can see, in the section above the ear, I'm going to be sectioning horizontally towards the top of the head. I will then go to the other side and mirror the same, sectioning horizontally and moving towards the top of the head. And then as I go to the front triangle uh, closest to her face, I'm going to work 
the section with the same formulas the way that I did at the back of the head. Perfect. So what's great about this with the triangle, it's really working from that point to flat. Your body position should be parallel to the flat of the triangle. Exactly. Perfect. So you're going to work through all of those sections and we'll get to see the finished technique. So this is the natural brunette, beautiful Lindy, absolutely stunning. Amazing to me, again, we were talking about that shine that you see with the illuminated shades. You really see this in this canvas. I mean, just looking at the reflection that you see through her hair and all of the beautiful movement that you worked through to create these gorgeous shades that we're seeing play through with light, absolutely beautiful shading. So let's talk a little bit about this technique and a little bit more about some of the formulations that we see within the canvas. So what I really love about the natural brunette is the fact that we're using four different shades within the canvas. Uh, they're a blended warm and cool color story. So as you can see, we have a five level matte brown, but we also have uh, we've created a six level brown gold within and because they sit in the same tonal value of one another, you're able to have uh, an, a high amount of blendability throughout and a natural reflection. Because if we think about natural brunettes, especially in children when they're young, the way that the sun touches the hair creates the multifaceted shades within the palette of the hair. So we see all kinds of different tones going on in there and basically that was a recreation of that. Beautiful, and looking at these shading, so the background formulation on this was a five matte brown, so building that in with 3%, and then your alternate shades that you built in as well throughout the canvas was the five brown gold as well as seven beige gold. And then new shade, again, illuminated shade, is our five B or five brown at brown copper. And then also utilizing a balancing story with our last color on formulation with a five matte brown. So really beautiful. And I love this technique because to me, this is about creating, you know, free form color. I mean, how many of us in salon now are really putting down the foil and doing more balayage work? To me, this is a little bit different than the typical balayage story and I know that that's part of the reason why you created this is that it's a way that you can build in all these beautiful shades through the hair and literally just let the colors lay where they need to be painting on the front and back of your hand. For, for me, you know, uh, as it is for most stylists, we all lack time. So it was creating something that's free form that you're able to do within the chair in a very timely manner. Because the shades are all harmonious within their levels, it does blend and sit softly, as you can see as Rebecca is going through the hair. Variation shade that you have in there that you can see spilling through. But it is really harmonious and absolutely beautiful. Lovely model for this, for our natural botifying serum. And so this is something new that we have within our dual senses line. This is actually going to create So we know that that was one of the prep things that we used on her. And then we had a lot of fun with her building working with Glamour Whip and then certainly our Naturally Full. So gorgeous look on this. I love it. And so next up, we're going to move into the next look in the collection. In the Iconic Brunette Collection, the Sensual Technique. So I see, Nick, you've already pre-sectioned your model. Tell us what you're going to do at this point. Rebecca, we sectioned the, the, the model in four quadrants. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an extended regrowth uh, application. And what I mean by that is not just your root area. I'm going to extend it down. I'm going to go in and outline my section just to keep it nice and clean. And I'm going to bring that, over direct that down just a bit further than I would normally because we want this 
to stay really natural looking. So we wanted to have that little more lived in look. And then I'm going to go in and continue applying my application to the regrowth area. And again, my extended regrowth area and continue it all the way down, bringing it a little further than I would normally, um, than I would normally. And on this model, it would be bringing it out where you really see fit. So that extended regrowth is within the whole collection. You're continuing that whole story, but then really kind of playing with the intuition of it uh, as far as turning the brush a little bit to a vertical as you work through. Exactly, Rebecca. So, and then again, we're going to be a little uh, intuitive about how far we go down as we get into our detail work. We'll adjust it and customize it as we go along. Again, I'm just going to apply, extend down, feathering it in a little bit and continue and just getting a really nice uh, even saturation and keeping it as symmetrical as possible with so maybe just a slight little bit of variation. Great. So you're going to apply all four quadrants and then we'll get to see the sectioning of the technique when you're complete. Exactly. Nick, so you did your whole background color and you did that extended regrowth area with the color, but then I also see that you applied the background foundation color through the back of the hair. Yeah, Rebecca, we, we, we did all of our extended uh, background color. We applied the color to the back of the hair just to give it a beautiful luster and refreshing. And then what we did was created an oval, a pointed oval section on the top with two smaller diagonal forwards in the front and then two more, if you just turn your head like that, right here on the side, which is where our detail work is gonna be. So now everything is neat and clean, out of the way, left ready for us to do our detail work. Great, so you're gonna start in on her left side, Nick, yes. and start to do the paneling. So there's really here four sections that are gonna get the accent color, and you're starting on the larger section on her left side. Correct. So share with us what you're gonna do. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start in that front section by taking diagonal forward sections, doing macro weaves, which is the weave of the weave. The weave of the weave. The so weave show us how weave. you are going to do this staggered motion, Nick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this section here, right, the hairline, and, and the purpose of doing a macro weave would be to have a very soft color diffusion right by the hairline. So I'm gonna go in with my thermal foil. I'm gonna place that in there, and I am gonna put just a little more extended background color in just to continue that design from what we started. And I'm gonna go in with my high lift and paint those strands down. And then I'm gonna apply another thermal. Like so, really simple. And then my next macro weave is going to be my background color. So now what you have is two sections that will flow beautifully into each other. I'm gonna apply my background, my extended background. I'm gonna feather that in a bit more. I'm adjusting it as I go along because we do wanna have a lived in look. And with her background, Nick, you're gonna take this a little bit further out because she's got a little bit more regrowth. I guess it would depend on, you know, for the model, she's got more regrowth area, so it would need to s extend out to where that regrowth zone is. But if it were a client that had m more minimal regrowth, you could vary it depending on what you want to see. Well, that's the beautiful thing about these uh, iconic brunette techniques is that you can adjust them the way it needs to because we're looking for a lived-in, really natural look. So. Um, you need to, you know, your color rules don't change. If you need to adapt and adjust to your client, then that's what you'll do. And then I'm gonna take Slice, and I'm gonna use our premium lightener, our Silk Lift Strong. So you're still using that extended background, right? Yes, I'm still using that extended background because it's a way for me to customize uh, for your client, for the model in this case. And really creating that lived in look. So now working with your silk lift to create your lightest diffusion of color. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's a beautiful diffusion between the, uh, the background, 
the lightener, and the high lift. So you'll get beautiful variations of tone. I'm going to paint this on, and then I'm going to add another, um, cover it up, keep it nice and, nice and neat. And then now I'm going to do a slice of background. So incorporating that shadowed background in between the staggering of placement between your high lift color and your silk lift high performance lightning. Yes, Rebecca, I'm going in and again, it's a beautiful way to adjust the color. It's a beautiful way to stagger it. I love the whole thought process of the staggered look because it's not a shadowed root. It's a lived in, it's a lived in. Exactly. It's a lived in process. Great, Nick. So you're going to continue working on this diagonal from the bottom up to the top of the section, and then you're going to repeat the same pattern on the opposite side of the head, correct? Absolutely. Great. Can't wait to see it. Great, Nick. So I see that you applied the two larger diagonal back sections, and now we're going to work into the two smaller that are in through the recession area of the head shape. Exactly, Rebecca. I'm going to go into the two small sections, and continuing in the same thought process using macro, sections and slices alternating our high lift, our lightener, and our background color in each shade. In right. each section, rather. Turn to me. And I'm going to follow the shape of the hairline. Technically, it's the same. It's diagonal. So I'm going to go in and do macro. And I'm going to do the high lift in the section underneath. But I'm also going to continue that um, darker extended regrowth yeah, area regrowth. yeah thank you for that <laughs> and always this first section i think it's about just getting it situated making sure the paper's clean and getting that it you know the regrowth area painted where well, you want to see it as a little bit more of that shadow around the hairline yeah this is kind of where your design comes in or design in general comes in and how subtle or strong you want this to look we want this to be much more subtle in the front, but still bright. That's where we want to get our little brightness around the face, around the eyes. I'm going to go in and paint this. This is with our high lift. My next section, a macro. So macro is just a finer interpretation of your weave. And it's for subtlety. I love a macro section because it creates a very subtle um, color variation. And this will get background. So I know around the hairline, you're doing a little bit of a weave. But as you move up, it's going to move into slicing. Correct. So the first two is macro of a high lift and a background, and the next is going to be a slice. And that's where I'm going to do my lightener. And then always incorporating your background as you work through. Always incorporating the background, the extended regrowth area. And again, I'm going to pick and choose how far I want to go down based on what I'm working with. Our model has a little more regrowth, so I'm painting some lower, some higher for that lived-in feeling. Great, so that was one rotation working with the high lift as well as your high lift lightener. And then you're gonna incorporate the background on the in-between. The background in-between, correct. And then I'm gonna repeat exactly what I did. So I'm gonna mirror what I did underneath on top and continue until there's no more hair left. Right, so from working from the bottom of the section all the way to the top. So. And then you're gonna repeat the same thing on the opposite side of the head shape. Same exact thing, it's mirrored. So we have some really pretty movement around Beautiful, the easy, yeah. simple. And we'll get to see the finish in just a moment. Great, so all of the accent sections are done. Your diagonal backs that are the larger sections, okay. the smaller diagonal backs. And then what's the finalization with the last section? The, the final step is to go in with our background color and to refresh in all of that through. So we have a beautiful veiling of a deeper shade. 
uh, which will be a beautiful overlay. Great. So reinforcing that beautiful brunette shade, that you know, beautiful background that you've exaggerated through the rest, and now just reinforcing right. through so, that. So, so now we have a beautiful oval. blend all the way through within all of the other uh, accent detailing in there. Great. Can't wait to see the finish. So I'm standing here with Nick Pagano who did this beautiful sensual brunette. And this to me is something that is really specific to creating different variation in a canvas and creating in a really simple way. I think this takes us away from having to necessarily do the typical balayage where you're building in a little bit more of that gradient regrowth and then into these multi shadings that you see through her hair. And her hair looks absolutely stunning, Nick. I love how it cascades over on your side, seeing that really fluid motion of her hair. Rebecca, I, I love it also. And it's a beautiful way because brunettes want to have something, but they don't necessarily want to be blonde. So this technique is a beautiful variation for them to get multiple shades of lighter tones from lighter browns moving down. So when we work in through this, the shading on this is just absolutely beautiful. And this is so acceptable for a brunette because she's not a blonde, but it breaks up the depth of her own brown so we can enhance her natural color and then put in lighter variations of shades all the way through. It's gorgeous how it cascades down. And I think what's great about it too is that when you look at this, you really can't figure out where it stops and starts. And I know that that was the idea behind the collection that Lindy had shared is that it should really have this fluid motion. Let's take a look now at the formulations and a little bit more of the technique diagram as far as the, the technique for sensual brunette. So looking at this, a background shade, and this was a combination shading with our five brown gold, as well as our six brown pearl. And then what's really great in this, Nick, I love the fact that we're utilizing our neutralites in a violet ash, and that was what you were talking about in your pre-record as your high lift blonde or right. lifted blonde right. color. Our high lift blonde and using the violet ash and the neutralites is really beautiful because it gives a tone that you don't necessarily expect. Do you know what I mean? It gives cool, but yet there's still warmth do, do because of what the underlying pigment is. And of course, we're going in Shade. with our uh, Silk Lift Strong and, and then uh, our Colorants as a refresher in between. So now you have three variations plus a background that all work harmonious, harmoniously uh, with each other to create, again, as we spoke to, that lived in look. And because you used the Violet Ash, which looks beautiful on its own, but sometimes needs a little bit of a finish, and certainly with our Silk Lift Strong, because we pre-lightened, we wanted to follow up with an all-over glaze, and certainly a Lumen is always an amazing glaze for a brunette. A Lumen can be something really beautiful for a high shine, doesn't have to be super vibrant, and this formulation with brown gold at a level seven, and the Natural Ash at a level eight looks stunning. Yeah, it was the, the perfect polisher, you know, it was the perfect finish on it. And speaking of polish, I know you styled this model and did a gorgeous job with her. I know that you worked with something new within the line, hold of a level three, which is the soft volumizer. Right. The soft volumizer was great because I did one volume through here, but not big. So and I still wanted it touchable. So we used a soft volumizer and a little twist around as our finishing product. So um, it gave me the body I needed, but it didn't give me big hair, but it gave me bigger hair and it gave me a really warm wonderful hold factor for it to last through the evening for her. And of course, when we you know, shampooed her, because we used Illumin as the final step, we used the Illumin wash and the Illumin treat. And then we also then finalized her with our soft volumizer as well as the Magic Finish, which I love Magic Finish because to me, it gives that beautiful almost shine and sure. hold in the, in the same combination. So really beautiful, the sensual brunette. And next up, we're gonna take a look at our powerful brunette. So moving now into something, you know, the strong personality mm -hmm. where we're going to see different variations, because when we think about a deep chocolate palette melting into these rich mahogany reflex. So when we think about this, the 
the overall appearance of a brown, it doesn't necessarily have to be brown. It can almost teeter slightly red, seeing mahogany type accents. And really with this type of canvas, we're looking at creating strength and definition. So let's take a look at the powerful brunette formulations. And this is working with beautiful formulations. Lindy, I know you worked on this, so share with us a little bit about what we did as the background story in formula. So what we did with the background formulation as well as the regrowth was one of our new illuminated brown shades, which was the 4B at RR. So a level four brown um, with a red red built in. And then in our detail sections, we used our premium lightener, Silk Lift Strong. Our secondary shade that we used in the enhancement or detail sections was one of our high lift effects R, which would be red. Uh, where we're gonna see the powerfulness or the strength of this color story is by creating depth in the perimeter, all along the perimeter, specifically because she is cut into a bob shape and her hair is actually pretty fine. So what we're trying to do is create that line to create the strength of the actual cut itself and then building the movement throughout the interior or the horseshoe shape as well. Well, I bet they can't wait to see her. So here is the reveal of our powerful brunette. Absolutely stunning. And looking at this, I'm just gonna have Kristen, our lovely powerful brunette, move her head. So I want you to be able to see just this dance and play of light of this mahogany shading that's working through her hair. Absolutely beautiful color strain. I'm just gonna take my little Varus finishing brush and show how you can see this beautiful movement of those shades cascading down the hair in mahogany. And with Kristen, she has a finer canvas. So one thing we did with her was worked really with that in creating density. And one thing with that we can always do is with product. So we certainly worked with our Dual Senses Color Shampoo and Conditioner and then our Color Lux Serum. But then we used something new in her styling, and I know this is one of your favorites, Lindy, is the Ultra vol Volume Body Pumper. And so this to me is something really new and amazing that we can use hold of a level four and that's what's giving her fine hair that really beautiful voluminous type finish as well as then finalizing her with our perfect hold in style sign our big finish. So what I personally really love about the body pumper is that it's designed specifically to be used for fine or thinning hair. And what it's able to do with a soft finish is create, you know, double the amount of density and volume throughout the hair without being tacky or difficult to get through. As you can see, Rebecca is really going through and moving the hair and she's able to move her fingers through it. And I think for anybody that has fine hair, they don't necessarily want to have a heavy feel about it. They want to be able to touch their hair and move around without losing that volume. So really stunning way to achieve that. And I think that with building in the shadowing and building in that background that's a little bit deeper on her gives the illusion of density with color. And then adding in an amazing ultra volume product that will help enhance that in the style and finish. So beautiful job, Lindy. Love our Thank powerful you. brunette. So next up, we're gonna take a look at our look of the mysterious brunette. So this is all about talking about the unexpected. And so where you're working with playful tones and it's about creating a different type of interior dimension. To me, this is about building in in the interior of the hair where you can't really figure out where it stops and starts and that it has this great illuminated type reflection that's happening throughout the canvas. So let's take a look, Nick, at the technique within the mysterious brunette and formulation, because this kind of had a two-part uh, application, if you will, but still really simple, really in salon friendly. And, and we're looking back at the top sheet, uh, Ash. Ash, do you know what I mean? Which is amazing, because it gives a variation of light without being blonde. And then we're looking at a seven uh, beige, and then uh, eight level silver beige, uh, in a color on sort of as a silhouette color. You know, it's the color that'll go in between. And then of course our, sil our Silk Lift Control, our conditioning cream developer to give us a little more brightness. 
So love that you use. So I know in the, the one model you use the violet ash and neutralites. With this one we use the ash ash. ash. So a great way that you can play using the neutralites to lift a very dark canvas. Um, and sometimes we need to do that and we needed to do that with our model. So then also using our silk lift control. And then building back in, in the next formulation, we also added in then the actual formulas that we were looking for. And this is one of the new shades. So exciting. Tell us about this so, one. So the uh, 6BP at VA, so a brunette pearl at a violet ash uh, on a brunette is amazing. I mean, let's talk about, you know, tone and control all in the same all in the same step. And then the uh, red effects, which is RV, which is a red violet. So now look at all the contributing colors that are going into this. And what's great with using the red effects, again, we're talking about if you had, you know, a client that had existing tint in her hair, another way that you would be able to lift out tint and infuse a red violet into a gorgeous brunette. And then I know that you finalized with some colorants that is a gold beige at a level eight and an eight silver From beige, beige right. at, at, PK. at pearl copper, which yep. is amazing. I bet they can't wait to see. Ready? And here she is, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. This is our Model G, and gorgeous look on her. Nick, I know you want to get your hands in this just to share with them a little bit about how you're seeing all this motion and beautiful shading, especially where you see where a brown at a lighter canvas like this can also meet some of these red shades in tonality. Well, what's beautiful about it is still a brunette, and she's warm but she's not necessarily a red head. She's not pulling so much red. The red that she's pulling was very intentional to see all the variations in tone in here. Absolutely but, beautiful, seeing all of that volume. And her hair, actually, we're seeing this amazing styling story. I know that with the finishing of her, because she does have a lot of hair, one of the options we used to shampoo her with was the Dual Senses extra Color Extra Rich, which sometimes with this type of a canvas needs a little bit more extra hydration, certainly our Color Lock Serum. And then we used our Ultra Volume Soft Volumizer, which I know has become one of your faves, Nick, to really create these great type of shapes. And then also the okay. new Curly Twist Twist Around. The Curly Twist Twist Around all help me form or help any uh, hairdresser form the shape and the style that you want because it, what it's doing is giving you a variation where you want volume so they each could be customized and put where you want the volume on the top and a little collapse in the middle, you know, and et cetera. So using the Just Smooth Diamond Drops, do you know what I mean? We'll take down some of that cuticle where you put some of the volume and then add luster and shine within the finish, and which is amazing. It's so beautiful too. And I love with the, the twist around is that it's a hold of a level three. So again, when we feel her hair, it's still really touchable, um, has a lot of motion, uh, but really it built this volume that still has a lot of touchability to it still has it's, great it's, it's shine. It's soft, it's shiny, and, and, and what's beautiful is when you see the, the movement of the finish, the reflection of the light from the diamond drops and from the product in general is beautiful. So the iconic brunette collection, let's bring the models back. hair and also along with the new illuminated lighting I know you guys can't wait to get them into your salon so I can't wait for you to work with the new shades and the new techniques with the iconic brunettes thank you for joining us tonight New York City Academy we'll see you next time